Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to run an alternative operating system called RISC OS on a Raspberry Pi. RISC OS was first released in 1987 and it's not based on Linux or Windows or Mac OS and it was the first operating system to be developed for an ARM processor. So before we try it out, let's delve a little deeper into its roots. In the early days of microcomputing, CPUs had an architecture that was either CISC, which stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing, or RISC, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. CISC processors execute a relatively small number of complex instructions to complete each task, while RISC processors execute a larger number of simpler instructions. Today, the CISC RISC distinction has become very blurry, with the processors found in most desktop, laptop, and server computers being a kind of CISC RISC hybrid. However, the chips used in most tablets, smartphones, and single board computers remain largely RISC in nature. Certainly, such chips are based on designs from a company called ARM Holdings, with ARM standing for Advanced RISC Machine. This said, back in 1983, ARM was initially an acronym for ACORN RISC machine. And, as this indicates, ARM processors were first developed by ACORN in the UK. The team that created the first ARM processor also developed an operating system for it called RISC OS. Fast forward to today, and RISC OS is now open source, with its source code managed by a company called RISC OS Open Limited. So, here we are on the RISC OS Open Limited website, where if we wish we can make a donation to uh, support their work, all the things they're doing here. And of course, we can also download the operating system. So if we click on Downloads, you will see various uh, versions are available for different uh, boards, lots of exciting boards. But we, we want a Raspberry Pi here. And if we take that, we go down here, you'll see there's a download here, just an SD card image about 120 megabytes. So if we were downloaded that image, we could then write it to an SD card using our favorite image writing utility, something like Etcher or Rufus or Win32 Disk Imager, after which you need to insert the micro SD card into a Raspberry Pi. And here I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3B+, although RISC-OS will work on any model of Pi, but do note that you'll need a mouse with three buttons, or at least a mouse with a clickable central wheel like the mouse I've got here, because you need to be able to middle click in RISC OS to bring up the menus. So, here we are booting into RISC OS on the Pi, all very colorful as you can see. And as soon as that uh, rather interesting looking progress bar completes, there we are, look, uh, we'll arrive on the uh, RISC OS desktop, where we have a desktop and we have an icon bar at the bottom. And uh, I think the text here on screen, the font is a little bit too small for us to see easily in a video. So I'm going to do this. And uh, as you can see, we've now got a scaled up display, which is much easier to see on video. And if you're wondering how I did that, I went down to this monitor icon here on the icon bar and I middle clicked. Basically in RISC OS, whenever you middle click, there we are, it brings up a menu. And so here I want to mode and you'll see the mode here was already set to a 1920, 1080, 16 million colors, 50 frames a second, F50. I added in into here the text EX0, EY0, which gave us the scaling we're now seeing on the screen. Now, the basics of RISC OS is clearly you've got a desktop, you would expect that, you've got icons on it. And we've got the icon bar with down on the left, facilities, drive, stuff like that. And on the right, you'll see icons appearing for apps when we run them. And we've also got control icons here. And basically, the way the mouse works here is that the left button is select or activate, the middle button is a menu, and the right button is what they call adjust. So for example, if I uh, activate or select that Raspberry there, it'll bring up show, showing us a task display for everything running on the system. That's very colorful, isn't it? Whereas if I did a middle click on it, we would get a, a menu, and that'll give us things like shutdown. I lost shutdown for a while, I found it over there. Now, let's run a few apps. So we'll bring up apps, that opens up the apps window. You'll see all apps have got an exclamation mark on the front, 
That's what separates an app or program from another file in Risco as if it's got an exclamation mark, it's a program. They call it a pling here for reasons uh, I'm not quite sure of, but we'll see a bit more of that a bit later on. Anyway, let's run up, say, the scientific calculator. I'm sure, I'm sure your favorite program to run up in the operating system. And I run it up, and you're thinking, where is it? Is it behind this window? No, it's not behind there. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Well, basically, it's run up on the icon bar. But in RiscOS, once a program is run up, you then have to actually bring up a window for it. So I'll click on that, and there is our calculator. And we could obviously use that. I can close it down. It's disappeared, the window's gone, but still the program's running. We'd have to middle click again and quit to get rid of the program. Let's bring up something else. Let's bring up, say, the editor. This is a text editor called Edit. And from that, we could bring up, again, a window, have lots of windows if we wanted them. I think uh, one will be enough by far. And uh, if we go down here and we do a middle click, you'll see it's great if we look at info here. This text editor was written by Acon Computers in, in 1994. This is a rather old text editor, obviously written for RISC-OS. I, I really do like that. Now, you also see just by the way down here for the editor, we've got options for creating things. We can create a text document or a basic program. And we've got options for what we do in basic programs. And uh, we'll look at that a little bit later as well. So if I go up to the menu we've created, you'll see there's no menu here for this program. All the menus are via, again, pressing there the middle button, so we can set things like the font size, that type of stuff. Everything runs with that middle button for menus. And I can type, for example, hello world. There we are, with an exclamation mark or a pulling, as they call it here, on the end. Now, in terms of controlling that, some of the controls are as you would expect. We've got, for example, a maximize over there, and we can restore as well, as you would expect to happen. If we minimize, though, it actually iconifies it. So we click on that, you see an icon appears over there, and if we click the icon, the icon disappears, it brings us back to the window. I've already shown you the, the close button and what that does, but then over here we have a button which sends the window to the background of all windows. If we click on that one, the window's in the background. Now that one's in the background. Now that one's in the background. This is novel, isn't it? We don't have that in other operating systems. I rather like that. That's a novel but useful thing, I think, in a Risk OS. Anyway, we'll close down that thing and discard those changes. We don't need that anymore. Just show you a few other applications. We do have a web browser, NetSurf, run it up, sync for a second, activate it from the icon. Different way of working, as you can see. And uh, I'm pretty sure we can get to uh, the world's favorite website. Exploding Computers is uh, there for us. Scaling is a bit strange given how I've scaled the screen. Let's do that, but clearly that works. And we could go to a page Although you would see here, this is a slightly limited browser. It can't, for example, um, see uh, uh, YouTube embedded content. Let's get rid of that. If you're thinking, how would you get more um, programs? You could go to the store. Let's bring up the store, uh, the Pling store. Remember, Pling is the exclamation mark thing. We could bring up the catalog. And here we could see loads and loads of applications, both free and paid for, uh, um, obviously, for a brisk OS. I think I saw there, as I scrolled back and forth very quickly, We've got, um, where was it? Doom. We've got the Doom Trilogy for game. That's exciting, isn't it? Play old games on this uh, old operating system. And uh, talking of games and stuff like that, we just close down these things here. If we go down to this SD card icon and click on that, open up that window, you'll see there's an apps folder there for the applications we've seen already. Pipe Dream is a spreadsheet, by the way, in case you were wondering. And we've also got diversions. What could diversions be? Well, diversions, is games. So we've got, for example, patience. Can't have an operating system without patience, can you? Again, click to activate it. Could play some patience down here. I've got a five there. And um, what should we do? Another card. Oh, it's Ace there. Look, that's exciting, isn't it? And uh, I don't worry, I won't play patience for hours. We'll, we'll leave patience for now because another even more exciting game, still running, of course, an even more exciting game is uh, Meteors. Meteors is a classic game. There we are, it's running there. I'm in the middle, rather small. I haven't scaled my ship at things, but I can spin around and uh, shoot. Can I get that one? Oh, I got it. Get that one. Oh, yes, this is great for this, isn't it? Here I am playing a fantastic retro game in the, the Risk OS operating system. Now, Something I really want to show you is that in RiskOS, you can run BBC 
basic. And there's various ways you can do this. One is to run the shell by pressing a F12. So I'll press a F12, and you'll see at the bottom of the screen there's some very, very small text comes up in the shell. Sadly, it doesn't scale with the rest of the desktop. So if we go and look at that by magical means a little bit bigger, and uh, I can type there, basic, and uh, enter, and look what is happening. We are now running a BBC basic uh, from what, a 1989 from Acorn, isn't that fantastic? Now, if we want, we can make this a little bit bigger. We can change the screen mode, so I could type uh, mode and uh, seven. And if we press enter on that, we have a, a screen mode change and uh, hopefully in a second, yes, there we are. It now looks we're actually running on an older BBC microcomputer where I could type, for example, print hello as a bit of basic code and uh, it would run. Uh, that code we get the word hello. Isn't that amazing? This said, this isn't the easiest way for us to run BASIC in Risk OS, although it is the most nostalgic. Not least, it's not very easy for me to record this, so I'm going to do a, a quit from BASIC, and uh, we'll go back to the standard uh, desktop. And uh, here, if we go to the SD card, you'll discover that we have in programming, you might have guessed that, uh, we have BASIC there, and uh, there are various uh, sample routines which we've got uh, over here. Let's keep our desktop uh, nice and tidy. And uh, these do various things. So for example, we run that one, this test, it'll uh, list lots of things out and we can press the space bar to finish. Um, I think uh, font test prints fonts on the screen, we can finish it off. So look, those are there, those are bits of code which let's work. And we can write bits of code like that ourselves because we can use the editor. And I've got the editor running, we go down here to it and I go uh, to uh, create a piece of a uh, basic, it'll come up up there, we could write a piece of a basic code. So we could say, for example, um, Ram put a remark on the front, um, um, printing hello, that's what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do a for variable equals one, two, 20, and we'll do a print, I can spell it, hello. We'll put a world in there as well, let's be wild. Um, and then we'll do a next, can't spell today, can I? Next bar, and we'll do an end to be nice and polite. So there's our piece of code. Now, we now need to save it, so we'll press the middle button to bring up the menu, and we've got save there, and we have to give it a name. We'll call it, um, what should we call it? Um, hello code, that sounds good. And uh, now we, we could just OK on that, but it won't actually finish it, because you have to drag things to, uh, to save. We'll do OK on that and it tells us that there, look. And we now have to take this and drag it across to an available folder. This one will do. It'll drag into there, and uh, there we are. Let's bring that to the, the four again, and our hello code is there, and we can now execute it, and uh, there we are. I'll just uh, cut in to show you that really worked. As you can see, we really have a printed hello world 20 times, and if I uh, press space, uh, we'll bring it back to a normal desktop. So there we are. I can't possibly show you everything you can do in BBC Basic in this video, but as I will hope you agree, it's great to have it here in Risk OS. Risk OS is a very lean, a very efficiently written operating system, and it runs very well on a Raspberry Pi. Because Risk OS is so different to Windows or Linux, it also makes you reflect on how differently desktop computing could have turned out. And of course, it's also great to be able to run BBC Basic on the Raspberry Pi. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.